In this video, we're going to discuss the limit laws and how they help us to calculate various kinds of limits. So let's begin by saying, we already know that the limit as x approaches some value c, could be two or seven or some other constant c, of some function x. Let's say we know that limit is l. And let's say we also know the limit of some other function as x approaches c, some function g of x. Let's say we know its limit is m. Then the first limit law is, is, is a way to think, make sense of, well, what happens when you have the limit of f plus g? You combine these functions. What will that limit be as x approaches c? To make sense of this, let's try and think about what's going on. Let's, let's unpack these definitions again. If we have some function f of x, and we know its limit as x approaches c is l, that means as you're getting closer and closer to c, the y value of the function will be approaching l. In particular, you can get as close to l as you want, so you can get with very close to l. Then any, any degree of closeness to l, if you're sufficiently close, sufficiently close to c. So maybe this is like 0.1 or something. You'll be within 0.1 of l if you're sufficiently close to c. You know, whatever your function f looks like, whatever y equals f of x looks like, it'll be super close to l when you're close to c. So maybe it'll be coming in close, coming in close. Now, this doesn't say anything about what's happening at c, just close to c. You know, at c, the function could be something else, but we know that when we're close to c, we'll be very close to l. We also know that our function g of x is going to be arbitrarily close to m. So you can make it arbitrarily close to m when your x is sufficiently close to c. So again, whatever, whatever this function looks like, whatever g of x looks like, whatever y equals g of x looks like, we know it's going to be arbitrarily close to m for x values that are very close to the c. So then what's gonna happen when you add your f with your g? When you have f of x plus g of x? What happens when you graph this out? Well, if all of these values very close to c are something very close to l and very close to c or very close to m, then it's going to make sense that you're gonna end up with some function that's going to be getting arbitrarily close to L plus M. You'll be arbitrarily close to L plus M when you're sufficiently close, sufficiently. Who knows what it looks like, some combination of these two things, but it'll be arbitrarily close to L plus M. And so you'd expect that this limit would just be L plus M. That is, it's just the limit of what F of X was plus just the limit of what your function g of x was as x approaches c. Similarly, if we had done f of x minus g of x, you would have that the limit would just be whatever the outcome of what f of x is, whatever it's approaching, minus the limit of whatever g of x is approaching. There's, there's some similar limit laws. What if instead of what if instead of adding and subtracting, what if we multiply? You can imagine multiplying f by some constant. So here's the here's the graph of f of x. You might come along and try and graph two times f of x or a half of f of x. But but if you graph two times f of x, notice all these values are supposed to be twice as large, twice as large, twice as large. So so if f of x was getting arbitrarily close to l, then in two times f of x it would just begin arbitrarily close to two times L. More generally, we'd say the limit as X approaches C of some constant like two or seven or whatever your constant is times a function is just that constant times whatever the limit of the original function was. Now, in addition to multiplying a function by just a constant k, we can also get crazy and try and multiply these functions together. You can look at the function that's formed by taking values of f 
and multiplying them by, by values of g. So let's consider the limit there. What's the limit of values of f times values of g? But you should think that, that when you get close and close to c, for some values sufficiently close to c, the values for this f function will be really close to l, and the values for this g function will be really close to m. So when you multiply them together, you'll get something arbitrarily close to L times M. That is something arbitrarily close to the limit of what F was just times the limit of what G was as X is approaching C. For all of these, I'm having X approach the same value. It's not going to work if over here you have X approaching one value and over here it's approaching some other value. Okay, so, so it seems like you can just carry this limit through. You can just carry the limit through. The limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. And, and the limit of a product is just the product of the limits. And, and so that might lead you to think similarly, the limit of some values of f divided by values of g should just be the limit of f of x divided by the limit of whatever g of x is going to. And that would be a reasonable guess, and, and it's almost true, but I say almost true because there's one case you might worry about. Remember that whenever you have division, you don't want to divide by zero. So, so this will be true as long as, as long as, this bottom is not zero. We don't want the limit of the g of x to be zero. And we'll see a few examples in upcoming videos that'll show us what to do if, if you do get in situations where it seems like you're being asked to divide by zero. Okay, we'll pause there for now. But the big idea of this video was just to point out that when you want to find the limit of some combination of functions, often, you can just look at the individual pieces. That's what the limit rules are letting you do. The, the, the limit of a function plus a function, just look at each piece individually. And in upcoming videos, we'll see a few examples of how this plays out.